Let's make a toolbox for Father's Day. I am so excited for this tutorial. This was one of the projects that actually took me longer than all of my other projects. I'm going to speed up through a lot of the stuff in the video because a lot of the building is what takes a little bit of time. So please be patient when you're making this because the end result is super cool. But as usual, I will drop everything down below in the links that you need, all your materials, your tools, the blog posts, and also where to grab the free SVG. And I also forgot to introduce myself. My name is Kelsey. I also call myself Dinosaur Mama. Uh, and you can find loads of free SVGs and Cricut projects over on my blog, which again, will be linked below. Let's get started in Cricut Design Space. Right, once you have the SVG uploaded into Cricut Design Space, I'm going to zoom out here so we can see the whole thing. It's one image, and for some reason the 10 feet went down here, but so you'll just have to move that when you click on it and move it up. It'll still fit right into, so I'm just gonna zoom back in. It'll still fit right into this little spot, so that's where it goes. And then everything is ready to cut. I always suggest going to your color sink, moving around your colors to where you want them to be, you can also do that when you go to your mats and make it and they just updated it so you can actually move multiple items. You can just highlight over and move the objects that way if you want to. As for sizing, the size of the box as is, um, you can just scroll to the box, the actual box portion, which why am I having difficulty? There we go. Right now it's it's pretty small. So it's 7.24 inches by 5.79 when you upload it. If you're going to resize it, which I did resize mine, I made mine um, so that it pretty much maxed out a piece of 12 by 12 paper. So you can just do the whole project, make sure you're doing the whole thing. That way all of your items are changed and then um, go back and check your bottom piece. So right now it's at uh, just about 10 inches. So I'm just gonna go a little bit bigger. And then now it's too big, right? So I only have I only have 12 by 12 paper, so 22. So you can go a little bit bigger than that. You can probably go about, for the total project, this is where I went. So the whole project was 23 inches and my paper was maxed, pretty much maxed out at 11.32 for my box. And my box is actually pretty big, so I was happy with the size of it. It used um, two pieces of red paper for my full box. And that's it. You can just send this actually right over to your machine. As always, I cut everything out on medium cardstock using the fast mode settings so that way I can get through it faster and I condensed this down so I only had um, 12 mats. I did cut the yellow this piece that is part of your level. I did cut that out with acetate so it looked clear. I just thought it would look cool but you can cut it out with whatever you'd like and of course I have all the materials and tools linked below in the description and in the blog post. So we're gonna get started with our box pieces. That is where I started. I think it is the easiest thing just to get it out of the way. You can start assembling all of your tools as well if that's where you wanna begin. But I am going to start assembling all my boxes. And I should have mentioned before, I said I cut everything out using uh, medium cardstock. But for my letters, I actually did use vinyl because it's just easier to place on. So it's totally up to you what you want to use, but uh, I did use vinyl for my lettering. And right now I'm going through and folding in on all of my sides for my box, and the top is going to be the exact same way. The top is the smaller piece, so it has the smaller sides, and it does have the two notches to put your handle into, which was similar to my Memorial Day project if you completed that one as well. So I am gluing all four of my sides here, going around, keeping my flaps on the inside. I am using my craft glue. It dries really quickly. I prefer using my craft glue over hot glue for my 3D projects just because it keeps it a little more seamless, um, like it glues it closer down, but it's totally up to you what you prefer to use. You can also use a tape gun if that is what you prefer. But go around all of your edges, make sure everything's glued down really nicely for your box, and then you're gonna repeat the same thing for the top. 
And I am going to speed through a lot of the building stuff just to keep this more condensed for you as you're assembling. Um, so take your time with this. This project did take me a little longer than my other projects because there's so many small components. But like I said, it turns out really nice. So just take your time and enjoy the process. Also for my box, I'm using textured cardstock. So make sure you're keeping an eye on where your textured side is. <laughs> And now I am just weeding out my vinyl. I did use Oracle vinyl for um, the black and then Cricut vinyl, which I don't suggest. It's just what I had for the white vinyl for the dad's tools. So I'm just weeding out my vinyl here. Now, when it comes to using transfer tape on paper, just be sure to use something that's not super sticky. You can also use painter's tape if you're able to make it work but um, just be gentle when you're pulling back from your paper. You don't wanna rip it. Like you'll see some of the red come off here. So just be as gentle as you can when you're using um, vinyl on, or sorry, yeah, vinyl on paper and uh, transfer tape on paper. And I'm going to just skip over the white um, lettering that I did for the dad's tools because I'm doing the exact same thing that you see here. So I weeded out that lettering and then I used my transfer tape and at this at the point that I used it for the white lettering, it was like very not sticky. So it worked really well. Like it just took me a minute to get the white lettering onto the transfer tape. But overall, like this this technique works really well if you're using letters and you want to keep them lined up. And here is that dad's tools version of the lettering that I placed onto the brown part. Again, I changed my colors and you can also customize this, delete the dad's tools, put a name on it, whatever you wanna do, make it your own project. So next we are going to add our handle in. For mine, it, the, my slits were really, really small. I did make them a slightly larger for the final SVG, so it'll be easier to pull through. So you're gonna place them in, and again, my paper is textured, so I had my textured side facing towards what I will make the front of the box. And I'm just sliding in those two little notches into the two slots on the top. And once you have them in, you are going to grab some glue and I put a dot like on opposite sides and then folded those flaps down so that it was secure into there. And so that way it looks like it's standing and you don't have any glue or you're not trying to, you know, like um, quill it onto the top. It's nice and it's in there and it looks really flush. It's a really nice uh, look at the end. So the first tool we are gonna start with is our level and we will go back and finish the box in a little bit with the details. But I did vinyl <laughs> again for the like front piece of the level and also for the measuring tape. And then I also used vinyl on the level for the part that was like the two lines on where you view the bubble in the level. I hope that makes sense of what it is. So we are going to start building um, that those all of our tools if you need help and you want to like skip through this and watching me build the tools and again i'm going to speed it up so it's a little uh faster you can always just look at your svgs and see where all your layers are and build it yourself you for these there's nothing special that i did like no special technique um i just glued everything down in layers um the measuring tape does have like you can stick the measuring tape into the piece of paper so that's really the only thing I would say is a little bit different, but for the most part, it's just layering the images with paper and vinyl, whatever's easiest for you. This is definitely one of those projects that you need to stay pretty organized. Like I put everything into one little bucket and it worked out fine. I mean, I didn't lose anything, so <laughs> we're good there, but you can also, you know, organize everything by type of tool or color or, you know, if you, if you want to just leave it on the mat and then pull everything off the mat, whatever's best for you. Just make sure that you stay organized so you don't lose pieces here. And jumping back into building our level, these have those little, this is again, those little like measuring tools on the level. So you see it, they're so tiny. I put them on the transfer tape and then I ended up just using my tweezers to place them on. I tried like reverse weeding, but because they're just so tiny, it's easier to just place it on. You can also use paper for these. They're very small. You can also just use a permanent marker and draw it on. So really whatever is easiest to you. And I swear I'm placing it on something. There's a piece of acetate there. It's just hard to see. But I'm going to place these on. I used my eyeballs at the end of the day to just measure them as 
close to the middle and as even as part as possible. And I did that for all three of those little level markers. And once you have all three of them that look like this, you can go ahead and glue them on. There's one longer strip that goes in the middle. You'll be able to tell where they fit. And then the two shorter ones are gonna go on the two on the outside. So not the little like curve half circle, the full circles. One goes up and down and one goes diagonal. But again, this is your project so you can truly build them however you want. Next, instead of using transfer tape for this part, I actually just used my fingers and peeled it off like a sticker and then placed it on. You're gonna wanna place this la layer on. So again, you can use um, paper for this. It'd be just as easy. I only went with vinyl because of how shiny it is. I wanted it to kind of look like plastic, but you can use paper for this for sure. If you have like a shiny paper, that'd be awesome. And then I just placed it on as evenly as possible. And then your last layer is going to be those rings that cover it up. They're gonna cover up like the plastic parts um, that are still sticking through. So you can cut those out in the same color or you can cut them out a different color like I did to make them stand out. And then that is your final level once everything is glued down. It's only one sided so you don't need to worry about making the other side. Next, we are moving on to our measuring tape, and I really wish that I worked as fast as <laughs> I have in this video. Um, and so I am using, again, vinyl for some of the details, like the 10 feet and the details on the actual measuring tape. You can use paper for this as well. So it's totally up to you. Just I just like to give ideas, but I used vinyl. And again, you have to be so careful when you pull this off because you don't want to rip your paper. And if you do, it's okay. It's not the end of the world, but you just wanna be careful. See, I had a little bit come off. And now I'm going to stick this part of the measuring tape in, like so it looks like it's being pulled out. And so it just sits right in there. And then for the lines on the measuring tape, I actually just grabbed my picket, my picket, my Cricut pen, and I started to draw them on. So it's not like this is super detailed or anything <laughs> special. It's not even, it's just, I thought it was cute if you draw it on. You can also skip this part if you'd like, but I thought it was like added a little personal touch. And then at the end, I'm just gluing on the little tab at the end, which I cut out in like a metallic silver. So I thought that looked pretty cool for some of my tools. I also cut it, uh, used it for my bolts and I used like, it, it's a, a basil, bling paper I think they call it or yeah bling paper and it's like a shimmery silver I used it also for my video game controller and it looks really cool so I'm just gluing on my buttons here for my measuring tape and here is our final measuring tape now the rest of our tools are super easy to put together. First I'm doing my bolts they just get a circle in the center just to give it a little more of a 3d look for both the screwdriver and the hammer, you're just going to attach the handle with a little bit of glue. For the screwdriver, the handle part goes on top of the metal part, and for the hammer, the hammer head goes on top of the handle. Next, we'll go ahead and build our lock. I'm going to use a foam tape for this just for the top part. So you will have to cut it down. Like I, I cut mine in half and then I actually like kind of squished it a little bit so that you couldn't see it as much. So I'm using my nonstick scissors and you're going to do this only for the top. The bottom part of the lock will not have the foam tape. And this is so it'll actually like kind of lock. I say that very loosely, but it will lock. And so I'm gluing this on to the half oval that is there, and I'm going to stick that onto the shorter part of the back lock, which is the three holes. So the three hole part, a piece of foam tape, and then the half oval. And you wanna line these up towards the flat bottom and in the center. And so do your best, use your nails to like squish in that foam tape. I highly suggest using the foam tape because then you are able to like lock it. Um, if you don't use the foam tape, you you won't be able to. It won't hook. So just, I, th I think it really adds to it. You could also use hot glue and like let it dry. Just make sure it has a little bit of a lip or like a 3D aspect to it. And then me being me, I skipped over the bottom part. And I built that actually on the box. But I'm taking the two rectangle, like rounded rectangles that are I, out of silver. I, I use silver foil paper. And I'm folding them in half towards the silver side. 
Uh, it, obviously, this is going to depend on what color you used for your paper, but I'm folding them in because this is going to be the hinges for the back of the box. So now we can start assembling our actual box with these pieces. Uh, take your time with this. It can kind of feel like a pain to put on, but what I have found after building this twice, the easiest way to do it is to just put it on one side and then fold them back and then place the top on like upside down. You'll see in a second how I ended up doing it and hold it there. So I'm placing these on. Again, use your eyes to measure them to be kind of even and because uh, you don't want it to be too lopsided or not be on connect like connected fully um, and make sure that your glue dries really well so that your hinges work really nicely. So basically I just sat it up, placed the lid on, like kind of like put the top part on with some glue. There's glue there, I promise. And then I folded them both old over and just held it and pinched it. And then that way when you flip it back over, it will still be just one box. Um, yeah, so just be patient as you hold this and it dries. And then once it's dry, you can fold the box up. Again, my glue dries really fast, the Barely Arts glue. So that's what I like to use. But now you have hinges. And you can always add more glue if it's not fully adhered. And now jumping on to our lock. So I'm putting on the bottom part first. This is the part with just the two holes. And it's going to go, try to line this up as close to the middle as possible. I think I end up shifting mine over just a little bit. So just try to do as close to the middle as possible and line it up to the top of the bottom of the box. And then you're going to do the opposite to the other side. But for the bottom, we are going to, now we want to like attach our lock. So I'm gluing the top on just like we just glued the, the, the bottom on and you want those to line up. So try to get these both on the middle and line them up as much as possible. So now we are going to add on our latch, our hook, and I am going to glue this so that the top part of the hook, you'll see it like is cut out to fit over that piece we put on with the foam tape. And I'm going to glue just the bottom. So I'm using like a decent amount of glue to glue it on, but you don't want to glue down that top part. You want to hook it around the top part and then place it and glue it down to the bottom part. And then we have a longer oval still sitting there. I don't know if you can see it's right above the handle. And I am going to use this to really attach it down, like keep that bottom part of the latch on. So I don't want it to like fly off when it's, you know, being used. So I'm adding a little more glue right around it. And we're going to add this top piece over it and this is definitely one of those pieces just take your time with it because you don't want to rip anything you don't want to break your latch and you can always reinforce your foam tape with um, like hot glue or regular glue I think I actually added some glue to mine to make sure it was really secure on because you're putting that latch over it you don't want it to like fly off or break you want it to be pretty stable and so there's our little latch that actually works I thought it was so cute and if you made my 3D flower bouquet basket for Mother's Day, then you'll know this is kind of similar to how I did that. You're going to fold in on the sides. I did not put like a perforation line or anything here. You're just folding it in as even as possible. And you're also going to fold in on the bottom because remember, you don't want anything to be larger than the top of the box. So when you're placing in all of your tools, keep that in mind because you want the box to be able to close. If you place the tools up too high, the box will not close. And I know this from experience. So make sure you're placing your tools below the top of the box. I hope that made sense. So we are placing this in. Again, I'm just using craft glue. You can use your Hot glue, if you prefer, especially if you want to like be super fast to dry. Like I said, my craft glue dries fast, but if you want it to be like almost instant. And just take your time to place these in, and then you're going to place the pieces also at the bottom. And then this way it's really stable. It won't like flap everywhere. I just wanted to give it four points. And plus we're adding things to this, like we're attaching things, so you don't want it to be too flimsy. So I'm doing the two sides and then also the bottom. Now, going in to the placement of our tools, I am going to speed this up because I don't think you need my full directions on where to place your tools because at the end of the day, this is your gift for your person, your father, your husband, whatever. 
So I'm going to go through it. I did use more foam tape. I'm using colored foam tape from Fanciful Chaos. And of course, that'll all be linked below. She has great colors to use. Um, and I'm going to use foam tape for some of these and just glue for some of the other ones. But just play around on where you want to place things. So like you see me looking, I didn't have like an idea of this. I do provide these extra legs or I guess that's what we'll call them, legs. And these are optional for you to use. I didn't end up using all of them because I ended up like grouping things together and layering things differently. And I just put them there as an option if you want to use them to add more depth into your, your keepsake box. So I am using foam tape here. Again, that same technique that we used for the Father's Day sign for those folding down at the bottom, folding in on the side. And what's great with these is you can make them different heights and you can make them um, go in further as well. Just remember, like I mentioned before, keep in mind your height of your tools because you do not want them to be too high because they will keep your box from closing. So you just want to keep checking yourself um, and make sure you're gluing everything down really well so that things aren't falling off. Like I, I seem to keep having my hammer fall off and that's my own doing. <laughs> it's nothing to do with the file. It's my own placement of my tape. So just take your time in your placements. Use your discretion. I put my measuring tape and my hammer and my wrench in the back of my box. So I placed all three of those in the back, the bigger tools. I'm sorry, I didn't put my wrench in the back. I put my wrench in the front. I just put my hammer and my measuring tape in the back. And I used foam tape mostly to secure those down. Uh, and then I actually just put the hammer on the back of the box. I didn't even use one of those little extra legs that I provided. And I truly apologize if you can hear my dog like breathing, <laughs> breathing in some of my tutorials. Like she's, she just needs to be around me at all times. And then uh, for the wrench, I put that in the front. I did use one of those extra legs. And I also attached the screwdriver on that same part. As you see, I'm checking my hammer over and over again because one, I didn't know where I wanted to place it. And two, I didn't want it to be too high and then hitting the roof. So honestly, this would have been like a 10 minute part of my video if I didn't speed this up. And so I just want to make sure that you know, like placements up to you. Just keep, those are the things you need to keep in mind that your box closes, that your tools are not too high, and that everything is secure on, so with tape or with glue. So see, I'm checking and making sure I did that with every tool and made sure that they closed properly. And now for my wrench and my screwdriver, again, I use one of those little legs. You can use two if you want. I really like to leave these up to you at the end of the day, but I'm doing that same technique, folding it on one side, folding it on the bottom, gluing down, making sure that my box can close. So. Those are my main things. And then, oh, my head's in the way. And then, <laughs> then you also have your screws and your bolts. The bolts I layered. And I really actually like the way they came out. I did three. So I did two on the bottom and then one on the top. You can always cut out more of these as well. And I used one of those legs to kind of have them floating towards the middle. And then for the screws, I attached them to the Father's Day part that was sticking out. So just keep in mind where you're placing those. And you can always cut out more screws if you want. You can even make the screws like confetti and have it in the bottom. That would be really cute. I just thought of that. So I'm just placing all of my stuff here. So, so far that's where I'm at. I have four of the pieces in. Now we're going to do the bolts next on the other side. And if you've made it this far into the tutorial, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And if you really like this one, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps me so much. And I enjoy bringing you these projects. If you are looking for anything specific or if you have any questions, please do not forget to leave me a comment. I try to answer every single one. And then after placing all of your small pieces in, don't forget to add on your front where you have your name box, dad's tools, or whatever you changed it to right on to the front of the box. And here is our final project. I love the way it came out. And if you want to see more detailed pictures, please don't forget to check out the blog. You'll have some close-ups in there to see everything. Thank you so much for joining me today as we built our Father's Day toolbox. I really hope you enjoyed making this craft as much as I did. I was so happy with the way that this turned out with all of the little tools and details. 
If you aren't already and you enjoy my projects, please don't forget to give this a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps me so much and I love bringing you new stuff every single week. Stay crafty.